today's craft, you'll need some dabbing sponges, some paint, any color of your choice. I'm using Waverly Chalk Paint in White, Folk Art Paint in Coffee Bean, and Waverly Chalk Paint in Elephant. You'll also need some E6000, some nautical rope, and an ice bucket from the Dollar Tree. You'll also want a glue gun, and I'm also using a heating tool to make the drying process between coats of paint a lot faster. First thing you see me do is making a big mistake that any crafter should not make, and it's all due to laziness. I was trying to make some drain holes because I'm going to have this outside and have a real flower put in it, and instead of using a drill bit, I used a screwdriver bit, and this is what happened. The entire bottom cracked, but eventually I did go back and fix it, so no biggie, just use a drill bit. Now I'm going to start out with my Waverly Chalk Paint and Elephant because I want that to be the main color of the flower pot. And I'm pouring some paint right here, exciting stuff. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab that on with my big sponge because, like I said, that's going to be the, uh, the primary paint color of the bucket. And I'm just going to dab that on there. And the reason why I'm using the sponges is so that I can get that feel of the of rust, like it'll feel rusty. Because I'm really into the rustic farmhouse look. And I'm not only into the look, but I also want it to feel rusty. And the sponge kind of gives it that texture so that when people pick it up, they think it's actually rusted. And now I'm just going to dry that so that I can add my second coat of paint to it with my heating tool. And I'm going to go in with my Waverly Chalk Paint in white. And what this is going to do is it's just going to kind of tame down some of that elephant. And don't be scared of the white. I mean, it's going to look kind of harsh at first, but once you do all of your blending, it's going to turn out perfect, I promise you. Um, now, like I said, I just go... I keep going back and forth with each color of paint. I'll go in with the white, and then I'll go back over it with the gray. You just want to do that until your eyes are happy. Next, I'm going in with the coffee bean. And what I'm going to do with the coffee bean is I want the actual look of rust. I want it to look like it's been outside for years. So I'm going to go over the ridges and edges with this because those are usually the places that rust before anything else does. And I'm just going to dab it. And once I go over the ridges and the high points, I'm also going to go on the main body of the pan. And I'm, or of the, sorry, I'm going to go on the main body of the pot because I'm just going to mix it and blend it all in to make it look, you know, well blended. And the bottom of it, I'm going to go over because it's got that texture at the bottom. I don't know if you guys have ever messed around with the ice buckets at Dollar Tree, but. They've got like a design on the bottom, and I want that to kind of pop out. So I'm going to go over it with the brown. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm using the smaller sponge on this because there's not as much area as I'm going to cover with it. And like I said, the sponges give it the texture, give it the feel of rust. So that's why I like using the sponges. And then you're just going to keep blending with all your other different colors. Just keep blending. You're going to still use your gray. You're still going to use your white. You're just going to blend over that so that it all blends seamlessly and it makes it look like it's just rust. And the reason why I'm using the ice buckets is because I wasn't able to find any of their galvanized flower buckets that they normally carry. And I don't know, I just really like the ice bucket because it's got those little uh, handles there that's going to be perfect for my uh, nautical rope to sit into. And like I said, you're still just, you're just going to dab all over until you get it to where you like it. Not everybody likes the rust, so this is optional. You don't have to use the brown. But like I said, I really like the rustic look. So, And then I'm just drying it with my heating tool. Please be sure to share, like, follow, comment. And turn on that notification bell so that you'll be notified of all my future uploads. That way you don't miss any exciting DIYs coming up. Now I'm going to take the nautical rope and I'm just going to glue it onto the, the sides there. I'm going to measure it out so that I don't want too much of it hanging off. I just want like maybe, it's probably 12 inches long, maybe. 
I didn't measure it out. Just measure, you know, just use your eye, however much you want hanging off the bucket. And then I'm going to glue it down into the little notches. And I'm, I'm going to use my E6000 because I'm going to have it outside. So I'm using the E6000 for the permanent hold. And then I'm going to put some um, hot glue for the uh, quick hold. And it fits perfectly down in those little handles. And then there you know, I'm going to put the hot glue in there so that I get that immediate hold. And then you're just going to kind of smush it down in there so that it'll get a good hold. And you're going to do the same thing to the other side. I just love how you can see my big boo-boo in all of its glory. Guys, I was lazy. I just didn't want to go out and get the drill bit. And I thought for sure. No, I didn't. I knew deep down inside the screwdriver bit wouldn't work. But And there's my handle. Like I said, I didn't want it anything long. I just wanted it to come over the bucket. And what you didn't see, I don't know why it got cut out of the video, but I put letters on the can that said, a rose is a rose is a rose. And um, now I'm spraying it down with the enamel to keep the letters on there. I have to admit, those bottom brown letters didn't stay very well. I ended up taking those off. Um, and then I got some letters from the yard sale department over, in the, over by the tool department in Walmart. Those worked perfectly. So I ended up redoing the letters. Uh, because those didn't end up staying for me, and then I sprayed it down with enamel again. And then I just filled the flower pot up with some miracle Grow potting soil, my favorite potting soil. And this is a Mother's Day rose I got for Mother's Day. It came in a little teacup. And there it is. There's our finished craft. Isn't that beautiful? I hope you all enjoyed this. Please remember to like and hit that notification bell. And I hope everybody has a rosy, beautiful day.